Hi guys. I've got a little Halloween project in mind using one of these cheap motion detectors. It's a frog that croaks when something crosses the path of the light sensor. Um, I might use the electric motor that's inside one of these vibrating toothbrushes, which looks like that. And I'll put a link to the video where I take these apart. I might use the electric motor out of this fluttering butterfly. I'd prefer to use this one than that one if I can because it's a bigger motor but I might might not get enough power out of the motion detector to drive it and I know I can get enough power to drive this little motor. And I was going to get this assembled to vibrate a spider but I haven't found the type of spider I particularly want. But I did come across this little group of hanging skeletons. Uh, they're on a bit of string. And you obviously hang them up across a wall or something. So my idea is to get the electric motor to tug on the string and that should be enough just to make them jump up and down a little bit because you only need a small amount of motion to catch somebody's eye if they're not expecting it to move. So, amongst these bits and pieces, that's the plan, to get a motion detector to notice somebody nearby and cause something to move. First of all, we'll take the motion detector apart. First we'll check it actually works. So that's fine. I might put a link to another video I did where I've modified one of these just to make a little vibrating hex bug type thing. So, check out the video description. Right, that just pushes through if you push it gently. There we go. So that's the inside. We've got a little battery compartment there, a bit of circuitry there, the motion detector there, which is just a LDR, light detecting or light dependent resistor. And there's also a speaker in there. And all I do is replace the speaker with the electric motor. So that instead of hearing the speaker, it makes the electric motor turn. And that's where I'm not sure if I've got enough current. I know I've got enough current to drive that motor, because I've done it before. But I'm not sure if there's enough to drive the bigger motor. So I shall put it together and try it out. Now we'll get the motor out of here. I've disassembled these a few times on videos already, but I'll do it again because it's fairly quick. Right, I'll save all those bits for other projects. And the electric motor's just there. So there's the motor. I'll desolder it from the solar panel and then try it out in place of the speaker in there. Just a thought while I'm on this subject, it would be quite easy just to replace the fluttering dragonfly with a spider and that would be just as good. But it 
be solar charged and I don't really want a solar charged thing for Halloween uh, because you tend to do Halloween in the dark so it probably needs to do something else to get the power to the motor but that's a side issue. Right, I'll desolder this and then try it out. Okay, we'll save that for another project. So there's our motor. We now need to work on this little circuit board. The camera won't pick it up, but there's actually two tags there quite clearly labelled SPKR for speaker. So I can desolder them and solder the motor straight on. That's just tacked in place. I'll put that on top of there just so it's a bit easier to see if the motor actually goes. I think you can see there's just the slightest bit of motion. In fact, I'd better bring it up closer to the camera. So, there's the motor. Yeah, I don't think you can really see that. It's not enough to do what I want it to do. I'm not even sure if that's visible. Let's try and get it really close to the camera. Yeah, it's a tiny bit of motion. So that part of the idea is not going to work. I could add some some more circuitry so that that actually drives a separate switch that will power the motor with a bigger battery but we'll now just try using this one Get a bit of tape to put on the motor so you can actually see it moving. Right. That's not working as well as I hoped. I'll do a little bit of work on that, see if I can improve it. Right. Macro mode. All I've done is I've put a little diode there in the circuit. So now we're getting the effect that I want. And I think I might just give the other motor another try. See if that diode helps there as well.
It's improved things, but it's still not good enough. I need a bit more motion than that to do what I actually want to do. So it looks like we'll have to use the small motor. Or, as I said, replace this with a bit of circuitry so it actually can switch a bigger battery. But I think I'll try it with the small motor and see if it will do it. We don't have enough power with the small motor to move that skeleton. So I'm going to have to have a bit of a change of plan here. Maybe go back to my original idea of a small spider. I'll see if I can point out the various bits. So we've got a spider over here. We've got the little electric motor at the top here just sitting on top of my monitor with a bit of wire attached to the shaft that's supporting the spider. I've extended the wires on that motor so that we can place the actual light detector over here so we can place it quite a distance away from where the spider is. Because the idea is the spider moves, it just catches your eye. We don't need a lot of movement out of it, we just need enough for people to see that it moves. Obviously it would be better if we could use more power and have more motion. So, as I say, I might do a part two where I intercept the circuitry and get it to power something else that drives the battery or switches the battery through to a bigger motor. But I'll just demonstrate this works. So if I walk in front of the sensor, the spider moves. Obviously you're expecting it to move, so it's not quite such a shock to you. But if it was something that was stationary and suddenly moved in your eye line, it's enough to make you jump. I hope. Let's do that again. So, there we go. A fairly simple conversion. We could make it more complicated, but for a simple first attempt, that works. Might be even more effective if instead of using a thin piece of wire I used some sort of springy elastic or something like that because then it bounces around even more. Here's another setup. I've just tucked him away on top of the mirror here. Obviously I've left everything visible so you can see what's going on. But if we go in front of the sensor, he jumps down on you. I think that's fun. <laughs> 